Hello guys, thanks for coming back again if you have subscribed. If you are yet to subscribe, please click on the subscribe button and also on the bell beside it. That will notify you when we drop a new video. Thank you. Now we want to look at these physics practical magnets for the year 2021 wide examination. So, however, I will need to explain some certain things to you guys. When it comes to physics practical, in, uh, in terms of this examination, whatever the saying is what you are going to make use of and then to prescribe a question which no one will even tell the exact question that would come. So, but um, looking at this magnets question very well, um, you can decide to choose a variable to be constant and then take the other one to be very, I mean, uh, vary the other. It'll take, for instance, in this particular experiment, considering that diagram, we are meant to suspend the meter root by two threads by the uh, use of Richter stand. So we suspend the meter root at a point 90 and 10, 90, however. And in this case, we can vary the height of this thread and probably calculate the number of uh, time is going to complete 20 oscillations in this form. So if I'm going to displace it this way, we read the oscillation and we count the time, we use our stopwatch to determine the time it's going to complete 20 oscillations. And moreover, we were also asked to get slotted masses and this might also affect the experiment. So using 2 meter rule, slotted masses, rate stand, what would the question be? Whoever can tell. This practical video is not for the purpose of my practice, but also to open our minds to likely questions that might come and we should prepare ourselves ahead for it, those are students. So, and for the teachers, looking at how to go through it or how to perform the practical, this is just a kind of uh, experiment that we might just go through and have an idea of one of the things on how to do it. So, in this experiment, I have the instruction on the board here. Let me read through it so we can see how we talk about it. So, according to the question here, we have a meter root suspended with thread at 0.10 and 90 here, and we have a retro stand, and this is a split cock. We have the split cock here as well. So, we're going to set the distance between these. We have to measure it, and that is definitely 80 centimeters because simply 90 minus 10 will give us 80. So in this sense, we hang, we have to select a mass at the center of the meter rule, and that is, we are not meant to get a knife edge. If we are meant to get a knife edge, we have determined the center of gravity by knife edge, and then that is where we are going to attach the mass. But here, yeah, we are going to attach the mass at the center of that 80 centimeter. So that is how it is. So then, we have to follow the procedure. You are provided with two meter rules and all the necessary materials. As ready here, so then let's go to the first step. Find the meter root AB with a thread at 10 cm and 90 cm. Measure and record the distance D, which is this from here to here. That is just 80 cm. So let's proceed. Measure and record the height AH of the thread on both sides should be 40 cm. So, which means the height of the thread should be what? 40 cm. So, attach a mass 10 gram at the center of uh, C of the meter root. So, we are going to select a mass 10 gram at first. So, in this experiment, we are going to vary the mass and not the height. height. We are going to keep this height constant and then vary the mass at the center. That is what we are going to do in this experiment. And moreover, if you check 2009 question, you will discover that the mass is kept constant and then the height is being varied. And the graph of T squared is plotted against C against h rather, but here we want to consider plotting the graph of t squared against n in this experiment and we'll see what we get and that is similar to what we have in compound pendulum and um, I'm using a formula for compound pendulum to plot the graph of t squared against n and that is what we're about to do here. So measure and record height to be 40 and that will be kept constant throughout the experiment. So then set the height Set the meter root AB into small angular oscillation about horizontal axis. Just like I did the other time, we're going to set it into a ang small angular oscillation about vertical uh, horizontal axis. Why the one of 2019 I said is of vertical axis? So, which means the meter root is rotating in this form and not like this. So, let's move on. 
determine the time t for 20 complete oscillations. That is why we have our stopwatch here. So to count immediately the oscillation starts, we kick up the stopwatch and then we determine the time taken for 20 oscillations. So then evaluate t, which is the period equivalent to t, the time taken over number of oscillations. And also we evaluate t squared. Repeat the procedure for n equals 20, that means we are removing this mass 10, we are introducing 20, 30, 50, and 100 grams. So, tabulate your readings. So, let's make a table for our readings where we have our masses and the time should be recorded in two decimal places, while these evaluations should be recorded in three decimal places. And however, the values of which you are meant to make constants or measure should be recorded at the top of your table. Here, after we go about the graph plotting, so we plot the graph of t squared on the vertical axis and m on the horizontal axis. We determine the slope of the graph and the intercept on y axis, then the experiment proceeds. So now let's start the experiment and see how it goes. Let's go for the experiment, and the first thing is to attach the mass 10 gram at the center of the meter root. So if you look at the center very well, you will discover that that, is, that should be at 50. So I'm going to get a tape and I'm measuring that and I'm self taping it at the center. So that is what I'm doing right here. So right here, the mass 10 gram has been selected at the center 50 of the meter root. So now we can start taking the oscillations and record our value. So I'm more about to use this. We have this. This is reset, reset. So and this is handy, stopping it there. So and this is reset. So for it to start, you click on this and it begins to read. It begins to read. So this is reset. And this is stop. So then we are resetting now, and then we're going to start it once the uh, oscillation begins. So ensure that the, the mass is selected very well in order not to cause uh, vibrations in your experiment. Okay, good. Let's retake the measurement of the eyes. Like I've said, it should be 40, and that should balance up. You know, I'm going to take 40 all the way from here. That is corresponding to the side of the thread. So that means this is not up to 40, then I have to stretch it up to meet the meter root at 40. Okay, let's go. 40. So then I tighten it more to so ensure that the thread doesn't move down. So then I take also this. And that is more than 40. So I think it's up to 40 now. Then I tighten that also to so ensure that it's not more than 40. Uh, the mass 10 gram at the center. So we have this at 50. Okay. So then let me reset this. So then I'm setting the meter into a small angle of this nature. So then once I leave it, I will uh, start the stopwatch and then begin to count. So then one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I have a, uh, let us take 20 gram. So for 20 gram, we have a, uh, let's take the resolution again. So each box represents 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times 10 is 5, so that is why each is calibrated in 5, 5 seconds up to 60. So when we take it, we have, uh, that is, uh, let's move a small angle and then we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And that is 18 points. 18.5. So this gives 18.5. 18.5 is zero. Eighteen point five zero. So now let's move. Almost 19 anyway. So now let's go for 30. Let's go for 30. And for the 30, I'm joining 10 now with it. 20 grams. To get the 30. So I have this. So with this, we can go again. Now let's go for the 30. Reset. So then I displace in a small angle. I can decide to take the other side as well. So there is no problem about that. So taking through this side, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So, and that gives 18 straight away. So I have 18. 18.00 rather. Just slight difference. Just slight difference. So now let's move to, I have done for 30, so let's make, let's make 50, the next one. So for 50, let's see how it goes. This is 50 gram, let's see how it goes. So then we reset again. We reset this again and then we go. For 50, what are we going to have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that gives me 17.5. Yeah. So let's read these values very well. I think you see that each box here represents, uh, each line represents 0 0.5. So if you look at this, it's 15, then two lines after you have 16, then two lines after you're supposed to have 17. So this, this is not up to 17. So let's say 16 points, 16 points, 5, 16 points, 5 or there you go, yeah, 16.5. Close to 17, 16.50. So now let's take the last mass, which is 100 gram. 100 gram. So for the 100 gram, I am matching 50 and then 50 together. So I get 100. So that is what I have here. So 50 is 50 is 100. So all about this experiment, we are keeping the height constant and varying the mass and see what effects would that have. And possibly it might not be exactly this you would meet in your exam. It might be in terms of varying the height and some other things. So, but this is just an idea of what you're going to meet. So now we have this. So now let's move. One, two. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that gives me, let's take a look at this. It gives 15.5. Great. 
So now that we have we are done with the experiments, so we can evaluate our t and t squared. So let's see how we go about that. Now here we go for the table and evaluate what we have on the table. So to find our t, we are gonna have that's t which is 19 all over 20, and that gives us 0 0.95. Actually, I'm gonna put that in three decimal places so that's 0 0.9. Five zero. So then the next one I have eighteen point five zero all over twenty. So that gives me zero point nine two five. Zero point nine two five. So then the next one I have um, um, eighteen over twenty, and that gives me. 0 0.900 zero zero. so then I have uh, 16.5 all over 20 and that gives 0 0.825 so then lastly we have 15.50 all over 20 and that gives 0 0.775 Seven seven five. So then the next is to evaluate our t squared. So and that's zero point nine five zero squared, and that gives us zero point nine zero two five, and that will be in three decimal places. I'm gonna have zero point nine zero three. So zero point nine zero three is what I have here. That's t squared. So let me repeat that again, 0 0.950 squared, 0 0.903. So then I have 0 0.925 all squared. So that gives 0 0.856. 0 0.856. That is what it gives. So then the next one, we have 0 0.9 squared. And that gives 0 0.81, and that should be 0 in three decimal place. So then we have uh, 0 0.825 all squared. So and that gives 0 0.681 in three decimal place. Then lastly, we have 0 0.7. 75 all squared so and that is 0 0.601 so that happens to be the value so and then the next thing is to plot the graph of t squared against n let's see how we plot the graph right here on the board now on the graph if i plot the graph is t squared against n so i'm plotting the graph of t squared with n which is the max the scale on x axis is 2 cm to 10 gram, so that is why I have 10 to 100 gram here. So then I have a y axis is 2 cm to 0 0.1 second squared, since I'm plotting t squared, so the unit will be second squared. So which means I'm going to have 0 0.1 to 1 here, so now we can start putting the values into um, the, uh, what's it called, the graph. And moreover, I have 10 boxes here, actually, the small boxes. So, which means if 0 0.1 happens to be 2 cm, definitely that means we're going to have each box is to be 0 0.01. So, it should, be able to, it should be able to accommodate some values here. So, like 0 0.90, 0, 0 0.86, you can take this to be that, and 0 0.81, 0 0.68, and 0 0.6. Zero. You should be able to accommodate those values. So now picking it from here, we have 0 0.95. Sorry, we have 0 0.90, and that goes for uh, t squared. So 0 0.90, I have 0 0.90. This is it. So we take it to n, which is 10 gram. So 0 0.90 goes for 10 gram. This is it here. Yeah. 0 0.90 goes for 10 grams. So then we have 0 0.86. So 
So 0 0.8, this is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, this should be around this region. So we have 0. Point, uh, this is uh, 0 0.81, 0 0.82, 0 0.84. 0.86. Wow, what a graph. So then I have 0 0.8 directly. So that is this. Sorry. 0 0.8 goes for 20. 0 0.86 goes for 20. Sorry. So that should be like this. And then 0 0.8 should go for 30. 0 0.8 goes for 30. Yeah. Wow, a negative slope. So then 0. Point um sorry uh, yeah 0 0.68 0 0.6 this is 0 0.6 and that goes for 40 so this is 1 2 3 1 2 3 so 0 0.68 goes for 40 0 0.6 so 0 0.68 should be uh this 0 0.626466668 and that goes for 40 so let's take that goes for 40 and we have 0 0.6 actually goes for 100 sorry it goes for 50 so this 0 0.6 is goes for 50 not 40 and then 0 0.6 goes for 100 so we have 0 0.6 to 100 okay this is the graph so we can join the values together and see the best line the best fitted line so if the graph is meant to be like this think of our set this because two is going to be off the line so and then if it goes this way it's not going to be making sense so let's let, take it this way it goes this way okay these values these values so i think the graph goes this way So then I have an intersection here on y axis. Actually, it's a negative slope graph. Okay. It's a negative slope graph, and then we have our intersection. So we can take the slope of the graph actually from any points and it has to be. So if we take it from one down here, or let's say here, downward to this point. So can take the slope as that so and that will be one thing so this is changing m and this is changing c squared so it gets a negative slope and that is quite all right so it gives something reasonable so which means we're going to have slope s equals changing t squared over changing m so and that will give us changing t squared we have the t squared here to be uh, zero point eight six zero point eight six. So we have zero point eight six minus the second slope, the second t squared at zero point three zero. All over, let's look at the change in n, and that is probably one ten minus twenty. So looking at that, we're going to have 0 0.56 over 9. So which means the slope S of the graph is, so let's take the value, 0 0.56 all divided by 90. And that gives 0 0.0062. So and that is the of the graph. Intercept C is around... Um, that is 0 point, almost 1, but actually let's take this to be 0 0.9, okay, no, that is 0 0.98. So C is 0 0.98, that is the intercept C. 0 0.0062, so then we are going to have P equals 2, and pi is 3.142, that will be squared, multiplied by the height of the trend, which is what? 40 centimeter. So all over now, the slope, which is 0 0.0062. So we have a 
3.142 all squared multiply by 2 and also times 40. So and that gives 789.77 all over 0 0.0062. So by dividing that by that's seven eight nine point seven seven divided by zero point zero zero six two. That is a very big value. So that means k is what one two seven point three eight two. Actually, one two seven three eight two point two six. Actually, now hello. Don't take this no experiment use. as a no. this experiment actually is just a run through to give you an idea of how it is performed because thanks for watching please subscribe to our youtube channel it's free thank you